Underground sewer technology has progressed greatly in the last few decades. Smarter techniques and creative tools have made us faster, safer, and more economical while minimizing our impact on the environment. Exciting innovations are being used from mainline relining to robotic sewer inspection to cementitious coatings, and it looks like manhole chimney sections are in need of innovation. We are here to discuss exciting new developments in the field of sanitary sewer manholes. These structures are the access points for the sanitary sewer collection system. We need these doorways to be functional and accessible for the routine and emergency maintenance of the collection system. We talk a lot about camera work, vacuum trucks, and mainline relining. We talk about eye and eye reduction. But we do not talk as much as we should about manhole chimney section rebuilding. Until the last few years in this field, we haven't had much to talk about. With the advent of some amazing new tools, we have more options now than ever before. There is new technology available that will change the way manholes are built and maintained, and we don't want to fall behind in this fast-changing field. There are 20 million manholes in the United States most of which need maintenance. The amount of money that will be spent on sewer infrastructure is astronomical. Manhole chimneys are a substantial portion of the overall total. As engineers and decision makers that set the tone for current and future methodology, we have a responsibility to the workforce to specify safe and effective methods of repair. We have fallen behind on manhole chimney design. The manhole was originally placed in the road with light to moderate traffic frequency. The increased weight and volume of today's traffic necessitates a basic redesign of the manhole chimney section. The need to repair manhole chimney sections has escalated due to EPA mandates and rising treatment costs. Increasing labor rates, shortage of funds, and inadequate methods have inhibited us from properly repairing manhole chimney sections. Manholes would be fairly easy to maintain if it were not for the interface between the foundation-like barrel and cone section and the chimney section which moves with frost cycles at the surface. The manhole chimney as it exists today is a disaster. When rain falls, it contacts the ground surface and works its way downward around the manhole structure. Rainwater will enter at the first opening, and those are found in abundance in the manhole chimney. The concrete adjusting rings in most structures have a design strength of 3500 psi, which may not hold up well when being regularly exposed to water and freeze-thaw cycles. Sulfides inside the structure are particularly damaging to concrete as well. One of the first processes that occur in a manhole is the cracking and settling of the surrounding road surface. Water leaks into the manhole chimney section, carrying with it fines from the road base, causing more settling and cracking. As water washes through the chimney, it weakens the concrete adjusting rings and they start to fail under traffic impact loading. To counteract the settling problem, some designers have opted for a large square of concrete or asphalt around the manhole frame. Square repairs have serious weaknesses in the design. There are planes of weakness at the thin points and large moment arms at the corners. To implement a full penetration road cut at the square corners requires a large overcut leaving a maintenance problem. It requires a huge concrete saw using an expensive wet cut diamond blade to perform the road cut. Some crews prefer not to use a saw and will penetrate the road using an air hammer. Air hammer cuts are almost always sloping which causes the repair to heave from frost. We've addressed the problems with current methods of fixing manhole chimneys and that leaves us with three questions. What would a repair that addressed all these problems look like? What kind of systems would be necessary to create the repair? And how would we stay within our budgets while using such a system? In answer to question number one, the repair would be round. 20% less material is used in round repairs. There are no planes of weakness as there are in a square repair. Round repairs are easily reinforced. 
Full penetration cuts without overcuts are not possible using a square repair, but with a round cutting device you can achieve this. The repair would match the color of the roadway for aesthetics. The structure would be perfectly level with the height and slope of the road. This makes future repaving operations and adjustments of the manhole frame easier. Pavers want to pave roads, not adjust manhole frames that are in the roadway. In fact, pavers wish manholes would just go away. We can make that happen, easy. We will cut and remove the manhole frame from the road and replace it with a custom steel plate. We cover the plate with asphalt so you can mill and pave with no obstructions in your way. Like magic, all the manholes have disappeared. After you have completed your paving, we cut and remove the steel plate and restore the manhole. Don't let manholes slow down your milling and paving. You have a major investment in paving equipment. Keep your equipment productive by taking the manhole obstacles out of your way. The method must be engineered for a 20-year structural life and consistent results every time. The repair must be correctly reinforced. You cannot correctly reinforce square repairs. Round repairs are easy to reinforce correctly. The repair should use cast-in-place concrete material. When we talk about using ready-mix concrete in the repair, the issue of expansion coefficient differential between asphalt and concrete is raised. Remember, the roads that we're putting the repair in are often asphalt and we're using concrete for repair. So let's talk about the expansion coefficient differential. Just how big of an issue is that? If you'll look at the drawing, you'll see a ruler. The first hash mark is 1 16th of an inch. That's the accuracy that we're shooting for in this type of construction. If you'll look at the edge of the dollar bill in relation to the 16th of an inch hash mark, you can see that it's very small. Alongside that dollar bill, as we zoom in, you'll see a very small layer. That's the actual expansion coefficient differential. So we can put that issue to bed. It's really not an issue. Another possible objection to using ready mix concrete in the roadway is the possibility of salt damage. Let's look at what salt could possibly do to a ready mix repair. You're looking at a repair that's been in the road for over four years. It is located in the Midwest. It's been subjected to a lot of de-icing chemicals and it has suffered some spalling because of that. As we zoom in on the repair, you'll see that on the left is the asphalt and on the right is the concrete repair. Ready mix concrete really is a good option for these repairs. The worst case scenario, they just look more like asphalt. Cupping and mounding can occur with asphalt. There will either be too much material placed in initially and it can't be rolled flat, or traffic loading can push the material down and you'll get a cupping. This does not occur with ready mix concrete. Our design objective is to remove the many horizontal joints that are in the traditional chimney structure. With ready mix concrete, we can achieve that one piece repair and eliminate possible leakage or structural weaknesses. The repair method must work well with masonry structures. The repair will begin 12 inches below the road surface. For structural reasons, we want to make sure we have at least 12 inches of concrete for traffic to run over. The repair will widen the support base and transfer loads away from the masonry structure. The repair must work well with spray coatings, either polyurethanes or cementitious. It must have an inner surface that acts as a barrier to hydrogen sulfide gases. The repair should have a seal or series of seals to prevent the structure from leaking even when being moved by frost and it must be vacuum testable. A repair like I just described would surely require some complicated tools and space age materials, right? No one wants to be a guinea pig for a new system. No one wants to use unproven materials and methods. We have installers in almost every state in the United States and in 10 foreign countries. The materials used are common. Concrete, steel reinforcing, commonly available waterproofing seals and sealants, 
and PVC pipe that we use in our sanitary sewers every day and have for decades.